if I was supposed to guess that Ahsoka was going to go whale watching, you win. You broke me. This is a thing. That's right, friends. I'm the man you may know as he from our Reviews Will Kill You, and I am here to break down Ahsoka, episode five. And I'm going to try to stay on track as I possibly can, but the rant is incoming because my brain can't function properly. Dave Filoni clearly needs to be fired. Not a good writer, not a good director. Now, I will say there's certain things I liked about this episode, but ultimately, I just I cannot get behind it. It's so ridiculous. I, I, I have trouble functioning and telling you exactly how this, this all works. So let's start with the plot recap. So Ahsoka finds herself in some place between time and space. We don't know where it is. Essentially, she lost her fight to Ray Stevenson and was pushed off of a cliff. She falls into the water and then into whatever place we're talking about. We finally know now why Hera is a terrible mom. She brought Jason so because he's Force-sensitive. So the entire point of bringing him instead of, of leaving him with the fleet and being protected and why she's a terrible mom is so that they can have a plot contrivance. So when he shows up, and they're looking at the scene of what happened. Where? I don't understand. Where is everybody? Where did everybody go? Didn't we just get caught in a giant hyperspace uh, slipstream? We just lost two X-Wing fighters because of it. No big deal. Nothing. They didn't just take a giant hyperspace ring and fly off somewhere. You scanned it. You know, well, at least Huang Chi... You know what you saw. You saw a big giant ring going to hyperspace. Pretty sure no one doesn't know what that is. So they find you have Hera getting out of her ship, walking around with the door open. Who leaves the door open with your kid inside? And then the kid comes out, and she's like, No, kid. Stay put. Don't come any close. Hide behind the droid. It's terrible. We get another butt shot of Hera. Because Dave Filoni really likes Mary Elizabeth Winstead's butt. So we get that. And she's walking around pointing her little blaster. And she doesn't find anybody. But she fa finds the robot. The droid. And he's like, I told them to stay together. And they did it. Oh my god. And then we start getting. We go to the flashback of what I'm being told is the space between. I don't know what that means. And for those of you who continue to tell me that this Ahsoka show, it's not for me because I didn't watch 30 episodes of a cartoon that got canceled five years ago. Yeah, that's not my problem. I watch the live action stuff. I don't watch kids cartoons. I do watch anime, but I don't watch Cartoon Network shows that are for kids unless I want to, which would be Adventure Time. I just don't expect to do homework. And this episode was a lot of homework. And yeah. So anyway, she's fighting. She sees Anakin. They start talking. And they have a lightsaber duel, which is good. It's great to see Hayden Christensen. And sometimes he looks good. Sometimes he doesn't. And we'll get into some reviews <clears throat> from everybody else out there. So they're fighting. And essentially, she goes back into different eras of her life where the young actress now here's something where you can see you can pick something out about Dave Filoni you can see very clearly that he has instructed Ahsoka to cross her arms all the time because he instructs the young girl who's playing younger version of Ahsoka and again, Rosario Dawson, good actress, being directed poorly. You can see that now. It's very obvious that it's not necessarily her fault. Because there are parts where she smiles in this episode, and it kind of lights up the screen. I kind of like seeing it. And she's been deliberately told, you must act a certain way, which is like a plank of wood. So then they tell this kid to act like a plank of wood. 
Now, what I don't understand is when I saw The Clone Wars, and I only saw the movie that came out, is I was under the impression that Ahsoka might have been like 19 or 20, like old enough to go into battle. I don't think taking a 14 to 15 year old into battle seems like a good idea to me. I could be wrong, but I didn't think the Jedi believed in child soldiers. I felt like, you know, the draft age in the U.S. is 18. Perhaps Ahsoka would at least be 18, but she seems much younger than that. And not only is she in a battle with Anakin, where she lo- her, you know, a decision that she makes loses a bunch of clone troopers. Uh, then they, at some point, fast forward to another battle that she was in, where she's a little bit older, and she is in a, she is part of the the group that conquered Mandalore. Now I'm super confused as to whether or not the Emperor did conquered Mandalore, or the Jedi's conquered Mandalore. Who conquered Mandalore? Because I don't really know. And is that why she has issues with Sabine? Because Sabine's a Mandalore, and then or a Mandalorian, and then she conquered. Like I don't understand. I didn't watch a bunch of cartoons. You have to explain this to people who haven't seen it. So anyway, there's there's interesting things. I like the lightsaber duel. It's okay. The music isn't particularly great or anything like that. Hayden Christensen's, Christensen, I thought, was pretty good. I, again, I, I don't mind seeing him now. I think he's come to terms with his, you know, how his depiction was, and it, it, it seems he has a better understanding of the role. And again, George Lucas directing the prequels, bad director directing decent actors poorly. Right, We understand that now. Looking in hindsight, a lot of people like them now, the prequels. We also understand that the acting is very wooden. They were forced to act in green screens with a director who was just like, read that line again, please. I don't... You know, not a very good director. We, we, know, we know that now. So uh, finally, after the duel ends and she gets the best of Vader slash Hayden Christensen slash Anakin... Uh, Jason knows where she is. Jason finds her. They pull her out of the water. And then you have the reveal of Ahsoka without her, like, headband or her mask. Like, whatever this thing is, it was probably one of the most jarring special effects I've seen in the entire show, where you get to see her forehead go into her weird tentacle or whatever that thing is. It was bizarre, disturbing, pulled me out of the show, and I started shouting at the screen immediately, being like, what is going on? If you watch my short, you'll understand. Apparently, Ahsoka needs to buy a hat. So anyway, we continue. Hera gets into a fight. Mon Mothma doesn't believe one of her generals. Her One of her generals tells her that I saw a giant hyperspace ring. And it is supposedly going to go retrieve Grand Admiral Thrawn. And there are two dark or gray Jedi on this. And a witch. And not only did I see the hyperspace ring, but it destroyed two of my X-Wings. And Mon Mothma says, that ain't good enough for me. I'm going to suspend your license as a general. Logic. Awesome. Again, then we see Ahsoka wake up. The kid, they talk to the kid. She gives the kid a big hug. The kid, it's kind of fun. I like the part with David Tennant as the robot and the kid where he's like, oh, you have a training thing? Are you going to train me to be a Jedi? And he's like, nope. He's like, do you know how to build a lightsaber? Yes. Can you teach me how to build a lightsaber? Nope. (laughs) I thought that was kind of, it. it was amusing. Anyway. (coughs) I digress. So then they come up. They need to buy Ahsoka some time. And the next 10 minutes is taken up with something I can only describe as ludicrous, asinine, moronic. Ahsoka goes and talks to some whales. Now, if you know anything about the atmosphere... 
I don't know how a space whale can stop <laughs> from floating through the atmosphere and not being, whatever, pulled through gravity. I don't know what these dumb whales are. I don't know where they came from. I understand there's a throwaway line that's supposed to inform me, the viewer of this show, that the whales helped better than Ezra defeat Thrawn and take him away to this mysterious other galaxy that he's in, which apparently there's a map to that you can't use a map anymore because it's been broken. You know, the map that was buried in a temple thousands of years ago for someone who's currently existing in the world and is not thousands of years old. Now, I thought this was going to be an Indiana Jones setup, and it was not. Here, I, I assumed that when Ahsoka touched the sphere, that she would had burned the imprint of the map into the palm of her hand, right? I thought this was going to be an Indiana Jones moment. No, it's not. The whales know where Thrawn is. The whales. Okay. Whales. <laughs> now, why I know Dave Filoni is also asinine and moronic is that in Mandalorian Season 3, and this is how you prove to everyone, please share this with as many people who like Star Wars <coughs> as you can as proof as to how we know that John Favreau had very little to do with Season 3 of The Mandalorian and that Dave Filoni had something to do with season three of The Mandalorian is because I remember a scene in season three of The Mandalorian where Baby Yoda is sitting in the cockpit in hyperspace, and there's this scene of like, ooh, space lights, ooh, he's in hyperspace. And Baby Yoda sees the shadow of some stupid wiggly worm. Uh, it's a whale with tentacles which are the same exact whales with tentacles that we're seeing. At the time when I watched it, I was like, there are creatures inside of hyperspace? That's kind of weird. Don't understand what I'm looking at here. That's interesting, and no one's going to explain it to me. Apparently, I was supposed to watch Rebels, or whatever cartoon I was supposed to watch, because the whales are in that as well. So Dave Filoni was setting up the Ahsoka show with these stupid freaking hyperspace whales. So then for the next 10 minutes, we get to watch Ahsoka get inside of a whale's mouth, fly around the rebel fleet, which all of a sudden, because they have a, they have a general who's trying to warn them that the grand Admiral Thrawn is coming. <clears throat> Instead of taking that seriously, they send a part of the fleet to go bring her back. If the fleet had left with her when she asked, they could have stopped the hyperspace ring. They chose not to. They chose to show up a day too late. What do you know? What do you know? Great writing, Dave Filoni. Great direction. Let me tell you, when people say you hit it out of the park, you hit it out of the park. So apparently now, they're going to ride the space whales all the way out. So now, let's just look at the reviews very briefly. Snips reunites with Sky Guy, but to what end? Ahsoka Episode 5 recap, chasing ghosts of better stories. Yeah, that's right, folks. Clearly, even Collider knows that there was better stories in here. And guess what? They, talking about Dave Filoni and Lucasfilm, thought this was going to be a big deal. Episodes 5 and 6. They're releasing them simultaneously in theaters across the country because, you know, Dave Filoni's getting ready for that silver screen debut. He's going to make his own movie, which may never, ever happen. This is bananas. There's no way this is, this is just terrible. It's terrible. I don't... Uh, the de-aging, some of it is very good. Some of it is bad. There are parts where I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good. And some of it... Like, when they're in that weird time and space place, it looks bad. But in, when he's in the Clone Wars, where we literally can't see who they're even fighting, he's like, let's get that droid army that I can't see because everything's covered in the fog of war. Oh, man. 
it's just not good enough. And I don't understand what lesson Anakin is trying to teach to Ahsoka. I just don't get it. Maybe you can tell me in the comments below. I, I don't know. Please let me know. Maybe I'm too dumb for this show. Again, maybe I should have watched 30 episodes of something else. But Ahsoka's going to go by herself to go with some freaking whales to go rescue Sabrine, Sabine and Ezra, the Space Goose Wizard. Awkwardly de-aged Hayden Christensen crashes the party. What party? Embarrassingly de-aged Hayden Christensen. And as I said, when he's in this weird time and space place, where, what I don't even know what that is, <coughs> I guess the lighting wasn't good enough, and they screwed... It, it, just, it, it looks weird. It's Uncanny Valley. When he's in the Clone Wars, there are some scenes where I thought it looked good. And, you know, then that's what I'm saying. Like, there's good and bad. But the worst part of it is the whales. These people, and this is the Daily Beast, they're saying the battle is frankly boring. I do, and I agree, it's, this is kind of funny, I do agree with this. The battle is frankly boring, and I miss Ray Stevenson. Balin, he kicked Ahsoka's booty, and I enjoyed every moment of it. I actually, which I neglected to mention in my previous review, I enjoyed the part where he's, I, I had said something about uh, Shin Hati. She had like knight's armor on, and I get, like, I like that concept that she's wearing like knight's armor, and Ray Stevenson fought like he was a knight, like a true Jedi knight. Standing like a high up form, swinging like almost a broadsword, and Ahsoka's fighting like ninja style or something like her weird blades. So anyway, I, I liked the Jedi battle, but there was like I liked her fight with Anakin. I felt like there should have been a better emotional connection between the two. I don't really even know what is going on there. So weird. Weird, weird. Wow, they compare it to the Black Panther final battle scene. I, I don't think it was that bad, but it's pretty bad. So there you go. That's it. That's my summary. If you like whale, I like whales. I don't like space I, space whales. I, I just I can't get behind the show. I'm trying, folks. I'm trying. And I love Andor and Obi-Wan Kenobi is an abomination, but this is somewhere in the middle, but just not good enough. And Dave Filoni is not good enough at adapting. Like, I'm sure the cartoons that you people want me to watch are fine, but live action, this is not good enough. You cannot have paper thin motivation. You can't bring a kid into battle so that he can find Ahsoka lost in the water you can't do that it doesn't make sense come up with another reason why the kid's in the water or the the kid is with the mom don't have her voluntarily bring her child into danger then have the child come out of the thing and talk about like we don't know this planet you may not be safe go hide behind the dr no all of it is terrible anyway let me know what you think am i nuts i going on long enough and i didn't lose my mind this time i'm angry but i didn't lose my mind i kept it together folks thank you for watching as far as you did catch our full-length audio podcast itunes stitcher spotify for free to you our reviews will kill you and live stream 7 30 p.m eastern standard time come join us it's fun good times had by all we love all y'all but i'm on to the next one Thank you.